Today on Real Ghost Stories Online, what happens when a teenage girl stays the night at a friend's house? A house that may just be haunted. A house where something had a very dark message about murder to deliver while a young woman tries to sleep. That story and more, today on Real Ghost Stories Online. Welcome to Real Ghost Stories Online. Call in your real ghost story now at 855-853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You are about to enter the world of the unknown and quite possibly the undead. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. That it is 855-853-4802 is our phone number. At Real Ghost Stories Online to share your real ghost stories with us. We'd absolutely love to hear them. Of course, you can write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. And if you'd like access to our bonus episodes, advanced episodes, uh, the ebook, the audio book, uh, all of it commercial free, and you're helping to support the show at the same time, then become an extra podcast person, an EPP member, sign up at ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories we do greatly appreciate that tony and carol with you on today's episode of the show what's going on well tony not a whole lot what about you you know it's another day it's another day (laughs) Uh, the day that we're uh, recording this it's still the end of december and we're about to enter into the um the darkest day of the year uh yeah no uh (laughs) (laughs) I was gonna say most people don't think of it like that, but whatever. Uh, well, you know, it's uh, it's been a dark year, uh, but no, the uh, the winter solstice, a uh, solstice, uh, which will be uh, actually happening tomorrow, uh, and I I couldn't be happier that we finally reached this milestone because I like the days getting longer, and then every day after that they just start getting a little bit longer and a little bit longer until it's you know July. That's funny you'd even bring that up because the other day I was like, is it? Is it time yet? Like, because it seems like it's getting dark so early. Yes, I've been wondering over it. I know, I know. But you know, where we live, it gets dark. I'd say five thirty. Yeah, quarter of six ish. But like, my niece lives in Nashville or Chicago. It gets dark there really early. Oh my god! I that's where I. That's one of the big reasons I always say like I could never live back up there again. Uh, When we were up there for Thanksgiving. 4.30, 4.30, it's dark. Yeah. And, it's and, dark. And, and right now, if you're up there, like 4.15, and I remember, this is normal. I remember like going out and playing and playing in the dark before I went in for dinner and it was dark, dark. And, and it's so cold. It's just, it's so draining. Um, but yeah, I, I can't do that anymore. <laughs> I'm glad that you don't think that Christmas is the darkest day of the year. No, it's not Christmas, is it? The dark. <laughs> Because <laughs> there's some people who would argue with you on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I and not saying Christmas is. Although I, I, I did just, I just did bypass the darkest day of of the year in in our world of just life and things that we've gone through. Uh, I, I'm yeah. ready. Like, it's just weird because 2020 was such a crappy ass year mm-hmm. that. Everybody was so, oh, great, when it's 2021, including me. I just knew it was going to be a whole new beginning, and it was going to be all just butterflies and unicorns all year long. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't. I actually think this year was harder than last year in a lot of ways. Yeah, it was. It was. I mean, 2020, you know, during, like, the beginning of the pandemic, when we all thought it was, like, the height of the pandemic, when it, like, reality, it's like... (laughs) It's just like this is like the, this the previews of the movie. This is, <laughs> yeah, this is yeah. Um, you know, that summer where we really couldn't do a lot because everybody was so locked down and everything was shut down. I really was, it wasn't a bad summer. Um, it was a um, little bit later um, in the year when it, it was the very end of the year where it got bad um, for for me in my world. Um, but then also everything else kind of really started going chaotic, too. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It, it's, uh, it's one of those things where you kind of pass an anniversary and you move beyond it, but it's like, yeah, you know, it's amazing what can change in the course of a year. Um, you know, good, bad, whatever. Um, but I feel like I'm in a much better place in a much happier place. Um, I think you are. And I know Harp is too. So I think she is. Yeah. I think we're on a good, uh, a good path now. 
Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, just crazy to think about um, 365 days. <laughs> just what can happen? Uh, eight, and I'm yeah. not getting my hopes up for 20. I'm not either. I'm just <laughs> like one day at a time. That's that's the one thing I, I did learn a lot. And it's hard for me because I'm such a look way ahead type person. But it's, uh, you know, I, I have to function on that. And that's yeah. that's helped tremendously uh, trying to, to, to work that into my mindset. Uh, 855-853-4802 is our phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online. Let's go to another caller. Hi. I'm Rosanna, and I'm from Washington, D.C., and I want to tell you guys about my first encounter with a real live ghost or what have you. It first started, um, it was about November of 1989 in the courthouse of Washington, D.C., my family and I were being evicted from our apartment, and we had to go to court to see if they could fix it. So my parents were there, I myself and my sister. We were sitting in the waiting room of the courthouse. My sister and I were, our backs were facing a glass. The glass of the back was um, the security guard. So if you look back, you will see the security guards checking everyone in and uh, and you'll see the screening x-ray system. So I was sitting there, I had on purple pants and a white shirt and a purple coat. The the woman beside me, she had an oxygen tank. She was a Caucasian woman, I myself am mixed. She was um, heavy set. She had a purple dress on that was flowers. And um, she, the oxygen tank was really tall. So she had it around her mouth, the, um, the part that you have to use to breathe. She had that on she was breathing really heavily. Um, I heard a knock on the glass. Just three knocks, knock, knock, just like that. And I looked back to my right and she looked back to her left and we both looked up at the glass behind us and there was a guy standing there. From, the, from what I saw, let me describe him. He was an African-American. He looked about maybe 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, an older guy, he looked to be about uh, 50s. He was a brown skin complexion medium brown skin complexion and he had a hat on all black the it was sort of like a cape sort of like what judges wear he had like a white piece in the middle of his neck that went along with the cape so he knocked three times when he did we both looked back and she said oh. it took a big deep breath and fell on the ground and then I said, that guy scared her. The guy scared her. And I put my hands on the glass and I looked toward the left, the way he was walking. And I was looking for him. I said, there he is. He's there. So I ran out of the court um, room and I looked over to the left and I saw him walking. But you can only see his back and his arms were swinging his coat it made his cape swing and so I said that's the guy who scared her that's the guy who scared her the security guards there were two of them they were just staring at me because they didn't see anything and my sister who was beside me she said I didn't hear anybody knock I said that guy knocked on the glass he scared her he scared her and then um I just kept saying it over and over. He scared her. He scared her, that God. And everyone was just staring at me, all of the adults. And one of the adults yelled out, get those kids out of here. They called the ambulance and they got us out. So we went outside to sit down. But as I was looking, I kept telling the security guard, did you guys see a guy come in with all black? He had a black cape and they didn't say anything. They're just staring at me. And we left out to go, me and my sister. I was about 12 years old. My sister was about 13. So we went outside and sat down. 
never saw the guy again. I don't know if the woman had passed away or not, but I do remember she had on a purple dress with flowers. She was a heavy set woman with an oxygen tank. And I also had on purple pants, a white shirt, and a purple coat. And when the guy came and knocked on the glass, he knocked three times, which made both of us look back. I looked to my right, she looked to her left. She said, <gasps> and just fell on the ground. And they started to do CPR or something on her. Now I was 12 years old, but I can remember like it was yesterday. And that was my first encounter with ghosts. And I'm Ramona Williams from Washington, D.C. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you for sharing that experience with us. What are your thoughts? That was a really good story. And in the middle of it, like I hit something on my computer Mm -hmm. and I thought I closed something out, but I actually like hit play on a piece of audio. I scared the crap out of myself (laughs) because it was right in the middle of when it was really intense. And she knock, knock, knock. And when she did that, like it starts, "Ah!" some guy starts talking (laughs) in my head and it scared the crap out of me. Yeah. So I, yeah. Anyways, so in the middle of that, like, that would really, my heart yes. started racing because I was totally into that story. Yeah. And I thought I heard him. Anyway, so not everybody heard it, just me. I was hearing voices in my head, literally. But it was very, like, that was a very interesting story because, like, she remembers so many details and she knows exactly what she saw. Mm-hmm. You know, that's a thing that people don't get. That, like, when people say, well, I don't believe. I use the air quotes. I don't believe in ghosts. But when something happens to someone that leaves that much of a mark on you and you remember it so well, Mm -hmm. like, how do you describe that? How do you explain that away? I just, I don't know. I I don't know. I mean, when you have those experiences, I don't know how one can at some point find a way to rationalize it away. Yeah. It's like, no, this happened to you. You don't, you don't have to explain it, but... Cause then, oh no, you must have been seeing things, or yeah. that. Cause that's a better explanation that a child is hallucinating. I know. Like, that, how you is know? that the better? Yeah, of the two, <laughs> or yeah. or an adult or anybody. Yeah, it's like obviously that didn't happen to you. You must be crazy. Yeah, this is the only other explanation. But I think you know, cause something like that, like you can tell when she's telling the story, like it left a profound impact on her. Yeah, it did. It did. That was a good story. You can hear it in her voice. Uh, it was uh, 855-853-4802. Our phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online says, when I was in my late teens, my boyfriend at the time and I went to his father's apartment to stay the night. We had planned on watching movies all nights. The two of them would often watch when my ex-boyfriend was growing up. Bit of back story here. I always felt very weird about being in the apartment complex and even felt a bit weird being around his father. That was only the third time I'd been around his father. Anyways, we watched the movies. It was late. I don't remember what time, but it must have been around 2 a.m. or later. We were all exhausted. It was a one-bedroom, one-bath apartment, but there were two couches in the living room with pull-out beds. They gave me the room to sleep in and continued watching TV, laying on the pull-out couches while I was ready for bed. When I was ready, I went to say goodnight, but they were both asleep. The TV was still on. His father liked to have the television on while sleeping, so I turned it down a tad as it was right outside the bedroom. I was about to sleep in. I lied down on the bed and got comfortable under the blankets, closed my eyes, and it must have been a few minutes later that I felt like there was a person on top of me holding me down by my arms and legs and were not being able to move at all. I couldn't make a sound and I couldn't open my eyes. I could hear everything around me, the cars outside, the TV still playing. I didn't feel like I was asleep but I still couldn't open my eyes no matter how hard I tried. I heard something dark. That's the only way I I know how to describe it. Say, kill them all. I'm not sure how to explain this either, but I knew that it was talking about the residents of the rest of the apartment. I felt tears flowing down my cheek, but I still... I still couldn't move or scream or even open my mouth. Finally was able to open my eyes and I saw black and red... Just those colors in the room after another period of time passed. 
I could move again and I got off that bed as fast as I could and ran to the door, opened it and ran out of the room and the TV was flickering and then went on the gray screen with the lines and then the white noise blared and it was so loud, which really scared me because I knew. I turned it down and it felt like it hadn't been long at all for the TV to shut off like that. I yelled to them to wake up. Only his father woke up when I yelled, so I went to the side where he was and I explained everything that had just happened to me. I was scared as hell. It's still scary to think about. And he said to me, I'll never forget it. Oh, honey, that's just my ghost protecting me. I was very relieved to leave. I told my ex-boyfriend what happened and what his father said, and he suggested it was just sleep paralysis and his father was a little unwell mentally. Sleep paralysis is what was medically assumed about the experience, as well as I had other sleep paralysis-like occurrences in my past, but never anything like that all. When I think back to that, I still wonder if it was not at all sleep paralysis, but something darker and not of this living world. Your thoughts on that? Bum, bum, bum. Yeah. Uh, I mean, maybe it's sleep paralysis. Mm-hmm. But I think there's some more to it. What do you think? Yeah, it seems like there's another element. I think sometimes, you know, whatever it is, uses things like sleep paralysis to their advantage. Because, like, I th- I think that there's sometimes, like, s- sleep paralysis can be just that. And, like, maybe you're stuck in a dream or something like that. And mm-hmm. it feels like you're kind of being pulled and it's... It's weird. It's a really weird feeling. Yeah. Then there's other times where it feels totally different. Like it's like it's some something is keeping you down mm-hmm. or there's something that's trying to get to you. I don't it's different. Cuz I've had some sleep paralysis before, I guess that's what it is. Yeah. That was just terrifying. Mm-hmm. And then I when I did wake up, it's like okay, there's nothing here. But it was weird because it's not like I was like in a dream where I'm some other place. I was there. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know how to describe it, but I don't know. I don't know. Do you think your experiences like that were sleep paralysis or do you think there was something else? I think I've had both. Okay. I think I've had both because like some of them like were absolutely terrifying. Like, like. It, like I'm in my bedroom asleep and it's at yeah. the door mm-hmm. and it's there and I know it's there and I can't move and it's going to come closer and closer and no matter what you do, you can't wake up. Yeah. And then I've had them where it's, it's scary because you can't wake up, but it's not terrifying. Mm-hmm. Just a different level. And I haven't had one for quite a while. And I don't want to have one because now I live by myself. And I think that would be really scary as shit. Yeah, I would agree. We'll, we'll move on to another topic. And instead Thank of you. letting you ruminate on the idea of or the fear of having that again. Uh, next letter says, hey, Tony and gang, I've been listening to your podcast for six months now. I love it. Not an EPP yet, but uh, will be uh, coming one uh, very soon. I have uh, what I believe to be three stories to tell. In January, my grandpa passed away. May he rest in peace. But the day before he passed away, he came to me in my dreams to say goodbye. As I told my family about this, it was too late. But just now recently, he came back to our apartment. It's a pretty small apartment. It's one story tall and the living room and kitchen are together with nothing separating them and a small hallway to the rooms and bathroom and boiler room. But a few days ago, I saw a bright figure pass through my front room to the restroom. It was 8 in the morning. I was wide awake. My brother was sleeping in our room, and I got up to see if it was him, but he was still asleep. My father has also encountered my grandpa in his room. He said that while he was alone, he heard something move in our room, and it went to the bathroom, and he heard the toilet seat lift up and flush, and he thought it was home. I thought I was home, but I was not. My mother believes us as well as my brother and the next night. We all knew that it was him saying his final goodbyes as the apparition and bathroom noise had all come to a complete stop. Here's another one, but from what I was in the fourth grade, in this school, there was a gym away from every class, and if we had to go to the bathroom, it was right next to the gym, all isolated, so I had to go very urgently. I did not know at the time that the school was near a battleground from the Civil War. As I was going to the bathroom in the gym, keep in mind I was eight years old, but as I went... 
Into one of the stalls, I heard an extra pair of shoes come closer to the bathroom. I thought it was a friend of mine, but I mistook it for the sound of shoes. It started to sound like boots. When I made it to the bathroom, I yelled, hello, but no response. I felt like an hour had passed before I heard all the sinks turn on and all the toilets flush at once. Picked up my pants, ran out of the bathroom as fast as I possibly could, and when I got to the classroom, I asked if anyone went behind me, and they all said no, and to this day I always make sure I go to the restroom where I can hear people. Thank you for letting me share my stories. You'll have more in due time. Keep up the great work. There's some creepy experiences there, definitely. Okay, what up with that person and the haunting in bathrooms? What about it? Well, because the first one was Grandpa going to the bathroom. Yep. Oh, yeah. the second one's about the bathroom. They got the power of the toilet with them. (laughs) I'm telling you, if I was that person... I don't know that I'd want to go to the bathroom much, but you kind of have to. But the first one actually kind of made me laugh because, like, Grandpa comes to visit and he's going to the bathroom, (laughs) which is just weird. I don't know why I found that so funny. I know. So so it made me wonder if the, like, it just seemed like maybe in real life, Grandpa was kind of a funny guy. Mm -hmm. And so... Because I think that's kind of funny that somebody comes back to haunt you and they use your bathroom and they're left messing with your toilet <laughs> lid and stuff. Like, in real life, Grandpa had incontinence. So <laughs> exactly, or like, he'll they'll know it's me if I'm going to the bathroom. <laughs> it, I mean, let a big one rip here. <laughs> oh, and Grandpa! The, and then the second story. So I don't know. I think that person needs to kind of look deep into themselves and like what up with me in bathrooms, haunted bathrooms. It is an interesting uh, kind of connection there, isn't it? I think so. Oh, thank you for sharing that. Uh, 855-853-4802 is our phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online. Makes me think about some of the, um, make me think of my high school bathrooms. It was the the school, it's torn down now, but it was more than a hundred years old. It almost looked like a prison. Uh, it, it, it was all limestone and it had like, like the turn, the, what, how is it, how is it said? Torrents where you can like shoot through the top, like the, like castle type things. Like turrets? Turrets. Yes. That's the word I'm looking for. It had like that lining the roof of the building. Ew. So it made it even more like prison like, like there's gonna be some other picking people off. Um, and, um, I just remember the bathrooms were all stacked on top of each other for all three stories. And in the men's room, there was, um, you know, the urinals. And over the course of 100 years, there had been enough leaking through the floors that the ceiling above all the urinals was completely gone. And you could see like the plumbing of the bathroom above you. Oh, gross. And and we were there. I was the last class in this school. So they wanted to put no money into this thing to fix it whatsoever. So I remember that last year, it was like shit was just breaking and like, well, that bathroom's closed now forever and like <laughs> things that like drip out of those pipes and you hope it's just condensation and not like it's leaking but yeah that was a horror story unto itself oh yeah and people like wonder, why did you want to leave your hometown it. yeah it's like what yeah. do you want a new school so does everybody and they built like this giant new facility that's just far too large to manage and it's like, you should have done two high schools. The town's big enough for two high schools, but the town does everything. If there's a wrong way to do it, that's usually how it's done. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, 855-853-4802 is our number. Let's go to the caller. Hi. Hey, guys. Um, I love the show. I just recently found it. I've always loved all things spooky. So your show is a really great listen while I'm at work all day. Um, so my story really could be explained away as just a mere coincidence, but... It's really the only potential paranormal occurrence that I've had. Um, And I'd love your take. I'll let you decide. Um, So my mother's mother, my grandmother, uh, died when I was 10. Um, Due to some childhood abuse, I really don't remember much about her or my first 10 years of life. Um, But my mom tells me that the last time we saw my grandmother at the hospital, um, she couldn't speak due to a stroke and she had Parkinson's, um, but she would look at me most of the time that we were in the room. Uh, My mom says that she really loved me 
uh, the most out of her grandchildren uh, because I was her youngest child's child, um, essentially the baby of her baby. So I think I was kind of her favorite. Um, so fast forward a few years and I'm 16 at this time. I got my license and a car and naturally I was looking for any and all excuses to drive somewhere. So I decided that I was going to take some flowers to her grave. Um, I told my mom where I was going and then I left. Um, I hadn't been out to her grave since her funeral. So I spent a few minutes looking around and when I found it, I was stopped frozen completely frozen in my tracks. Um, it was the anniversary of her death. So I frantically tried to call my mom, but had no cell reception. Um, so I was a little spooked, but I laid the flowers and um, I spoke to her for a few minutes. And then uh, I decided I was going to have to talk to my mom when I got home. So whenever I got home, I told my mom what had happened. And she thought that I had just known what the date was and the significance, and that's why I had gone in the first place. Um, but I had absolutely no clue that that date was significant at all. Um, so it doesn't stop there. Uh, fast forward about, I think about 10 years or so, um, and my grandpa was not doing well. Um, he was in the hospital and my mom called me and said, you know, I think you need to come. I think that the time is coming. And so uh, my husband and I got in the car and we drove down that night. And um, it was pretty late when we got in, maybe 9, 30, 10 o'clock to my mom's home. And we had planned to go see him in the morning. Well, um, it turns out that he passed uh, just within the hour that we had gotten to her house and she said uh do you know why like this is kind of creepy kind of kind of crazy and I was like no why and she said it's the same date that grandma died so my grandma and grandpa died on the same day uh years apart and after that strange experience that I had had on the same date too. Um, so love to know what you guys think about that story. I love telling it, it's my favorite story. Um, kind of makes me feel closer to them. And uh, I don't know, that's it. Uh, hope you guys like it and uh, great job on the show. Love it, we'll continue to listen and I hope you have a great day, thanks. Thank you for sharing that experience with us, thoughts? I. Okay, so paranormal, who knows? Mm -hmm. But I think the grandmother and grandfather dying on the same date is kind of a beautiful coincidence or just yeah, it was it's meant interesting. to be like I I I don't think it's a coincidence. I just no. think it's it's like a beautiful love story that they would die on the same day. Yeah. You know, I like to think they were two people who were really in love because if they had a really horrible relationship and that happened that would be weird yeah but um but i and then with her showing up at the um cemetery on that day you know and that could be you know it like just like some kind of weird brain muscle memory like you're drawn to it that day but I do think it, it's more of a, a sign like that you would of all days just shown up on the same day that she died. Yeah. That it's an, I don't know. I, because it's not like that's necessarily paranormal in itself. But I, I think it has, there, I think there's a deeper significance to it than it just being a random coincidence. That's exactly what I was going to say. I think there's another, there's a deeper significance to it than what. You know, it's just on the surface there. What do you that think, I that think? I think the grandmother, you know, was drawn to her and yeah. it was, and I don't know, it, it was the grandmother kind of calling to her, maybe yeah. mentally. I don't know. What, when, when two people die like that on the same day, you know, for unrelated, without being like in a car accident or something, you know, is that, you know, it, it's it's just kind of interesting. It's almost like our body's dying on demand. Yeah, and I've only known that to happen one other time, and I can't really, I don't really want to talk about it, but um, sure. it was suicide. Yeah. And that was kind of hard, but I also got it 
because I do think he died of a broken heart. Yeah. And that's the way I like to think of it. And, sure. um, but you know, when it happens years apart, I don't know. I think it's kind of this beautiful nod to like, yeah, you could have died the day before or the day after mm-hmm. there's 24 hours out of <laughs> yeah. the whole year. <laughs> or, or another thing that, you, <coughs> excuse me, another thing that you see quite frequently is um, sometimes not even like dying on the anniversary or something, but a milestone of some sort where it's like, I'm going to stay around to watch you graduate. You know, someone who's dying right. of cancer or something. And it's like, yeah, they're still kicking it. And then day after graduation, they die. And it's, it's, it's just interesting that our bodies are able to do that. And you can will it to keep going, you know, when it really shouldn't be. And then you can also say, I'm done. I can't, I can't, I just have to let my body go. And that in itself, it all equal take care of itself too. It's just interesting. And maybe there's some of that that went on in this story. Yeah. Maybe it's like, I want to go the same day. Yeah. It, it could very well be that. You know, so maybe it's kind of that sort of thing, you know, because even when the, you know, when someone is very old or has dementia or Parkinson's or any number of ailments, you know, cancer, you know, yeah. when you're dying, you know, you, I think there's more of a connection than what sometimes you realize. I think they might be trapped mm-hmm. kind of in there, but you know, they know yeah. it's that day, you know, there's some clarity there. I don't know, but I think that is a love story. I do too. Thank you for sharing that with us. 855-853-4802 is our phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online. That's going to wrap up this episode of the program. Thank you guys for listening and keeping us on the air. We could not do this without you. We greatly, greatly appreciate that. Uh, Check out uh, our EPP options, ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories to get in on all of that. Until next time. For Carol, I'm Tony. Thanks for listening to Real Ghost Stories Online.